Now let us start with the market for lemons. So we have talked about what is the meaning of adverse selection? What is the meaning of moral hazard? Now let us do a simple model for uh, adverse selection. So let's have a look at that. So we are talking about the used car market. So the assumption is that there are 100 <clears throat> sellers of used car. Right. And there are 100 sellers, sorry, 100 buyers of used cars. Hmm. Now, um, the point is that everyone knows one thing, that 50 of these cars are good and 50 of these cars are bad. So this information, everyone knows. But what they don't know is that which car is good and which car is bad. This is what they don't know. So everyone has this information that there are 50 cars which are good cars, plums, and there are 50 cars which are bad cars, lemons. This much information everyone has. And seller has one more quality of information that is that seller knows very well that whether a particular car is a good car or a bad car, whether a particular car is a plum or a lemon. Buyer doesn't know that whether a given car is a, is a good car or a bad car. He just knows this, that there are half of the cars are good and half cars are bad, right? Now let us make an assumption that uh, the sellers of lemons, And there are sellers of plums. The minimum amount which the seller wants for lemon is $1,000. The minimum amount which the seller want for plum is $2,000, right? Let us talk about what buyer is ready to give for uh, lemon and plum so buyer is ready to give at max twelve hundred dollars for a lemon and at max twenty four hundred dollar for a plum good car so these are the assumptions now there are two cases which will arise one of the cases is that the buyer can verify the quality of the car. And in the another case, buyer cannot verify the quality of the car. So there are two cases. When buyers can verify the quality of the car and the, when buyers cannot verify the quality of the car. Now, when they can verify the quality of the car, supposedly I am the buyer. I know that looking at the car, I can understand that this is a bad car. For the bad car, I am at max willing to pay only $1,200 and you are the seller of the bad car, you have understood that I have verified the quality of the car, you know that the minimum which you are willing to sell uh, is at $1,000, this bad car. So if you can, if I can verify the quality of the car, then the price, the minimum price which you are willing to accept and the maximum price which I'm willing to pay, the equilibrium price is going to be between them. It depends on the bargaining power of, of each of us. So when buyers can verify the quality of the car, it is easy that the price is going to range from the maximum price which the buyer is willing to pay and the minimum price which the, which the seller is willing to accept. So the lemon is going to be sold between $1,000 and $1,200 and the plum is going to be sold between $2,000 and $2,400. Please write it. The lemons... will sell between $1,000 and $1,200 while uh, the plums will 
will sell between two thousand dollars and twenty four hundred dollars. So all of this is due to the bargaining. Right. So this is about when the buyers can verify the quality of the car. Now the interesting case is when the buyers cannot verify the quality of the car. Well, buyers know one thing for sure that half of these cars are good and half of these cars are bad. They know this that beforehand they don't know what kind of car they will end up with. It is only once they will take the car on the road, they will understand its mileage, they will understand its properties and then they can verify whether it is good or bad but beforehand before making the purchase they don't they don't know whether they are buying the good quality car or they are buying the bad quality car right so the idea is the buyers they have to make the guess about the quality of the car right so there are two or three points out here one in this case buyers have to guess about how much The car is worth, right? Uh, so buyer is going to think in his head that it is equally likely that I can because half of the cars are good and half the cars are bad. It is equally likely that I can end up with a good car or or a bad car. So why should I be paying the higher price? I will be paying only the expected price, right? That's the best what the, is going to be there. So please write suppose. A car is equally likely to be a plum as a limit. And this information, uh, everyone has that 50 of the cars out of the 100 cars, they are good and 50 of them are bad. Then a typical buyer would be willing to pay the expected value of the car. Uh, so think about it. What is the expected price? <laughs> or expected value with the probability half i will end up with a good car plum and i am willing to pay 2400 at max for a plum with probability half i am uh, uh, i will end up with a lemon so with uh, and I'm willing to pay at max 1200 for this. So basically, since I cannot verify the quality of the car, for an average car, I am willing to pay only $1,800. And don't you think the next question which should arise in our head is that at $1,800, who do you think the seller of a plum or a seller of uh, a lemon would be willing to sell? Supposedly, I am the seller of a lemon. I was willing to accept minimum $1,000. 
you are paying me $1,800 for the average car. I am more than willing to sell you. Supposedly, if I would have been the seller of a plum, I was willing to accept minimum $2,000. But for an average car, you are willing to pay me only $1,800. I will then not be willing to sell you plum, right? Uh, so at $1,800, only lemons will be sold. That's an idea. So please write. Who would be willing to sell? Their car. At this price. So when I say who would be willing to sell means which kind of seller? A seller of a plum or a seller of a, a lemon. Okay, so 1200 is the amount which buyers want to give. want to give or lemons and 1800 is more of course 1800 dollars is definitely more uh, than the minimum amount which the seller is accepting for uh, the limits and it is more than the minimum price at which seller of the limit Would want to sell. Uh, so don't you think only lemons are going to be sold at $1,800? So lemons would be sold at $1,800. So the price which the buyers are willing to give is $1,800, right? For the average car, they are willing to give only $1,800. $1,800 is less than the minimum price which the seller of a good quality car would want. Uh, so good quality car seller is not going to sell. So at $1,800, $1 only lemons would be sold, right? Please write the price that the buyers are willing to pay. For an average car. So they are willing to pay $1,800. Seller of the plum is willing to accept $2,000. So at least a good quality car seller is not going to sell at $1,800. Who are going to sell? Only the sellers of lemons. A willing to pay for an average car is less than
it's less than the price. That the seller of the plums in order to part with their cars. Right. So at a price. of $1,800, only lemons would be offered for sale. Right? Would be offered for sale. So, Tomorrow, we're going to look at what is going to be the equilibrium price in this market and how many lemons and how many plums would be sold and how do you conclude this model. Uh, so this is what I wanted to do in this recording. So I'll do the remaining part of this in the next time. Thank you. Vita.